love never dies. Inspired speech will be over someday. Praying in tongues will end. Understanding will reach its limit. We know only a portion of the truth, and what we say about God is always incomplete. But when the complete arrives, our incompletes will be canceled. And our gospel lesson for today comes from the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 10, verses 26 and 27. Jesus says, therefore, don't be afraid of those people because nothing is hidden that won't be revealed and nothing is secret that won't be brought out into the open. What I say to you in darkness, tell in the light and what you hear whispered, announce from the rooftops. For the word of God in scripture, for the word of God among us and for the word of God within us. Thanks be to you. God. How are you? Good. Have you recovered from camp, Cassidy? Yeah? That's good. That's good. Ooh, how's your summer been, huh? So, we started last week a new theme for the whole year. Do you remember it? We are talking about kingdom of God, or thinking about it where we are right now, in a village, right? So we're thinking about the village of God. And what do you think that would look like? How do you think God's village would be different from our village? There wouldn't be any bad people or bad things going on. That's hopefully true, right? God the village would all be good. So we want to think about how can we help our village be a little bit more how God's village is. And I found a really great book that we're going to read together. It's called God's Dream. And it's by a person named Desmond Tutu. Have you ever heard that name before? I bet some people out here have. He's an archbishop in the Episcopal Church. And he's really brilliant. I like his stuff. So I was excited to find this book, and it's exactly what we're talking about. And hopefully I'll be able to read the words from the screen. Or you can help me out. It says, Dear Child of God, in your loveliest of dreams? Do you dream about flying high or rainbows reaching across the sky? Do you dream about being free to do what your heart desires? Or about being treated like a full person no matter how young you might be? Do you know what God dreams about? Close your eyes and look with your heart. I am sure, dear child, that you will find it out. God dreams about people sharing. God dreams about people caring. God dreams that we reach out and hold one another's hands and play in one another's games and laugh with one another's hearts. But God does not force us to be friends or to love one another. Dear child of God, it does happen that we get angry and hurt one another. Soon we start to feel sad and so very alone. Sometimes we cry and God cries with us. But when we say we're sorry and forgive one another, we wipe away our tears and God's tears, too. Each of us carries a piece of God's heart within us. And when we love one another, the pieces of God's heart are made whole. God dreams that every one of us will see that we are all brothers and sisters 
Yes, even you and me. Even if we have different mommies and daddies or live in different faraway lands. Even if we speak different languages or have different ways of talking to God. Even if we have different eyes or different skin. Even if you are taller and I am smaller. Even if your nose is little and mine is large. Dear child of God, do you know how to make God's dreams come true? It's really quite easy. As easy as sharing, loving, caring. As easy as holding, playing, laughing. As easy as knowing we are family because we are all God's children. Will you help God's dream come true? Let me tell you. Let, what does it say? Let me tell us a secret. God smiles like a rainbow when you do. So we can help make God's dream a reality. We can help make our village more like God's village simply by doing things we see Jesus did in his life, doing the things we feel we know are right when we pray or when we're in a situation and we feel like some people are doing things and there's a choice to make, we know, right, inside. We know what's right, what God would want us to do. And when we do those things, we help make our town a little bit more like God's and I love that idea that each of us have a little piece of God's heart. And when we come together, we make God's heart whole. We bring it back together. We make it a reality here in our midst. And I think we've probably had moments where we've seen what God's town might be like. I know I have. So I want you to pay attention this if there's just a, a moment where you're like, oh, this is really nice. This is really awesome. Or, you know, people are helping each other. Or something's really beautiful and, and everybody's appreciating how beautiful it is. Just look out for those little moments where you see God's heart coming together and everyone sharing and caring and, and living like we're in God's village. Because there's little moments to make those moments longer and longer and try to connect them all until one day we know, we trust that God's rule will be over all the earth. So every town, everywhere will be God's village. But we're going to work and help God make that happen right here. So be on the lookout for those moments this week. I want to hear about them. And I bet we have some that we
pray for me as I pray for you. Let us pray. Holy, living God, make your truth and presence known to us this day and every day. Oh Lord, you are our rock and our redeemer. Amen. So as I told the kids, last week we introduced a new worship theme for this next year of ministry together of worship. And we're going to be talking in all of our worship series throughout the year about the village of God. We're going to spend the next 12 months thinking about different places in our village and what would they look like if they existed in the village of God. And so as I mentioned, next week we'll start our tour of God's Village at God's Drive-In, right? Watching some movies and, and seeing what God would show at God's movie theater, and what we can learn from those movies. And then we'll take a look at God's Hospital at, for a little while in the fall. And when kids go back to school, we'll look at what would God's school be like and God's bakery and God's auto shop and all of those different places we're going to touch on them throughout the year and think about how would they function what would it be like in god's kingdom at those places so we're going to be using scripture and a little bit of our own imagination to think about how god's law of love might change the way these places function but I, I originally scheduled two weeks for an introduction to this theme before we officially start the tour because I knew I had more than one sermon's worth of thoughts on this topic in general. It's a big topic to think about, God's kingdom, the village of God, and how does that relate to our lives of faith? Last week, we also introduced the Bible verse that's going to be guiding our tour, which is Luke 17, 21. God's kingdom is already among you. The reality of God's world is here. It's just sort of under the surface. We are living in the village of God, right here in the village of Whitney Point. It's just veiled to our eyes. Last week we talked about how, so then our job as followers of Jesus is to announce the good news, to share the good news that God's kingdom is here, to help lift the veil, to show others the reality of how it would be where God is in charge. A reality that Dr. King said is a society governed by the law of love. That's how we'll know it's the kingdom when we see it. Similarly, we heard earlier the Apostle Paul wrote to the Corinthians that love never dies. Right? Love is that guiding principle of God's kingdom. Love is what shines through the veil that shadows the completeness of God's realm. And Paul said, we only ever know a portion of the truth here in our realm. We can only ever see it shadowed, right? And as we say, and anything, so anything we say about God is going to be incomplete. But he said, when the complete arrives, when God, the complete, arrives, our incompleteness will be canceled. God's kingdom is the completeness of love that we're working on bringing out in the world. And the more we bring it out, the more it cancels out our incompleteness. It makes us all better. 
A few months ago, I had the rare opportunity of just attending a worship service, which is a great thing for a pastor every once in a while, to just sit back and hear a sermon. And I got the chance to hear a friend and a colleague preach, and it just so happened my friend Rachel Morse, the pastor at Norwich United Methodist Church, decided to preach on God's kingdom. And I, I asked her for a copy of it, because it was so great. She started out by saying this. She said, I really like to talk about God's kingdom. I know it's probably more accurate to use the phrase kingdom, or even commonwealth. But I also think there's a reason Jesus talked about a kingdom. It seems to me that the idea of God ruling a kingdom makes a mockery of earthly kingdoms. If God rules, how could anyone else pretend to rule over each other? If we call for God's kingdom to come, it means we don't really take any other human king or leader seriously. It's as though God is calling us to say, you think you're king? You think you have power over God's people? You only have power with them. Those were exciting words for me to get to hear, and I think they are exactly the key for us think about this topic. This is how we live out the kingdom, by no longer letting those who are seeking power to rule over us, but to choose every day to live with God as our leader, to choose to be citizens of the kingdom. In Matthew's Gospel, Jesus says, everything secret, everything veiled, will be brought out into the open. This veiled village of God is coming into reality. It's never been meant to be veiled forever. And the more love we can shine through it, the more we will burn away that veil like mist. darkness, tell it in the light. What you hear whispered, announced from the rooftops. This is how we are to be citizens of God's kingdom, to take what we hear in prayer in our hearts, what we know and read in scripture, and to announce that, to live that, to reveal God's kingdom by living with God as our ruler. If, as Jesus says, God's kingdom is already among us, then let's just start living like we're already there. Think about it. If every child of God behaved like they were in God's kingdom, then the kingdom of God would be here. It would be realized. It would come on earth as it is in heaven. When we live like we're in the kingdom, we are building the kingdom here. That's how it works. And I guarantee, I guarantee you've seen a glimpse of it, at least once. We've all experienced what life is like, what it feels like and looks like in the village of God we have, because it's where we came from, and it's where we're going. And Jesus says, it's already among us. It's here. So if you're not sure, if you've ever seen it, I'm here to tell you, you have. Just be more aware now in the weeks ahead. Look for it. My, my mentor always has said, she thinks the kingdom of God is like the seventh inning stretch. Because fans on both sides stand up together, and they sing just because, right? For that one moment, the 
rivalry cease. The score doesn't matter. Everyone just stands and sings out boldly and off key into the night air, and it is a joyous experience. That's a glimpse of the kingdom of God. I have definitely witnessed some glimpses of the kingdom this past week at camp. I mean, look at that group. Those are all the kids from the Wiki Point School who happen to all be there the same week. Now, I mean, camp in itself, the whole experience, I think, is kind of a vision of the kingdom, right? We're living together, working together in nature, sharing meal, every meal together around the table. No TV, no cell phone. It's just, we're all there together. But specifically, I saw the kingdom of God this week when on the last night we had together, we held hands in a circle around some glowing candles, and we shared our joys. We shared what we were thankful for from that week. And even the 14-year-old boys cried openly, and they were loved for it. And they shared, too, what they were thankful for that we felt like we had become a family that week. It was beautiful. And then again, the next day when the parents and guardians started arriving, I saw teenagers running to their parents. Can you believe it? <laughs> running to them, hugging them, excited to tell them everything that happened, bringing them back to our circle, showing them the dance moves as we sang our favorite songs one last time. It was the kingdom of God, a vision for us to soak up and to remember and take with us into the world. As I've been really thinking about and researching this topic for a little while now, the words from the Hallelujah Chorus just kept coming into my mind. The kingdom of this world is become the kingdom of our Lord and of our Christ. Shall reign forever and ever. Hallelujah. And so of course I, I started going down that rabbit trail, right? Looking, looking that up. Where do those words come from? And I found this great quote from author Jessica Miller Kelly. She says, the Hallelujah chorus is taken from three separate verses found in the book of Revelation. And the book of Revelation, as we know, is ultimately a book of comfort and encouragement for people experiencing severe persecution under the Roman Empire. The message of the Hallelujah Chorus, in short, is that despite all evidence to the contrary, Rome is not the ultimate power. God is. Hallelujah means praise the Lord. And for early Christians, it was a bold rejection of the world that commanded them to praise Caesar. No way, they said. We praise the Lord. This is how we live in the kingdom of God that is already among us. We reject the authority of those seeking power, and we claim God solely as our leader. We decide each day to live as a citizen of Christ's commonwealth, channeling, remembering, holding on to those moments of glory and divine that we have all witnessed, and building off of that, knowing that feeling of being in that moment, of experiencing God's kingdom shining through the veil, remembering that feeling and then bringing that same feeling to others, bringing that same glory with us as we go to new places, allowing our words and actions to reveal and to make real the kingdom. 
kingdom of God in our world. This is how God is building the kingdom here. We are the hands and feet. God has no other way of bringing in the kingdom besides through us. So as we continue to wrestle and engage these ideas of living as citizens in the village of God, as we prepare to begin our tour of God's village, I want to leave us with a poem entitled The Kingdom by R.S. Thomas. It's a long way off, but inside it there are quite different things going on. Festivals at which the poor man is king and the consumptive is healed. Mirrors in which the blind look at themselves and love looks back at them. An industry is for mending the bent bones and the minds fractured by life. It is a long way off, but to get there takes no time. And there is no admission. If you purge yourself of desire and present yourself with your need only and the simple offering of your faith, green as a leaf. May our faith strengthen us to live as citizens in the village of God so that through our lives this week, our own village might get to see a glimpse